what analog hardware do I need for music production? Honest answer, none. You honestly don't need anything for music production, any hardware. All you need for music production, and this is the honest truth, if I was if I was producing music, I would not be using any of this for production. Right? When it comes to mastering, yeah, go through all of this all day long because it creates an exceptional sound that is highly superior to anything you can achieve in the box. And that's just facts. And the the the, the fact is with with music production is that this is a creative process. And trust me, if you start putting analog hardware into your music production, what ends up happening <clears throat> is you'll, it'll, it'll stump your creativity. <clears throat> and it will do that because every time you open a session, you've got to recall all your settings, everything like that. All right, it's, it's great fun to work on analog, like on an analog console, on an analog hardware, it's great fun. It's a pain when you want to jump session to session to session. And we know, as a, as a music producer, you all know that you don't just go, right, here's, I'm working on this track, and I'm going to write this track, and now, at the end of the day, I've finished that track. You know that doesn't happen with every single track. You have to go back to it a week later. You'll go, some tracks you'll go back to months later and finish them off. If you've got an analog console that you're using or analog hardware, you've got to also patch all that back in exactly as it was. It's a big pain that massively is a con that outweighs all the pros. Now, trust me when I say this, the, the biggest producers that I know, the producers that are making hit records, they're not, they're not working with any analog. They literally have a good computer. Right, they will have a great computer that that's um, like an M1, M2, you know, a great uh, laptop or a great um, desktop computer, and it is a powerful one that will run every plugin they need. Right, that if you if you want to buy hardware, if you want to buy something for that sort of setup, buy a controller, not this one because it's stupidly priced. It's a lot of money. But buy yourself something like an SSL UF8 with a UC1. You've got yourself digital control there of plugins. Really, really quality control. Now, the thing with that is, is you get to feel like you're on an, on an analog desk. You get to feel like you're on, on um, an SSL console in some ways. Um, you'll get 95% of the sound. But 95% of sound is, 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 is perfectly fine when it comes to production. It's it's perfectly fine, and honestly, the best producers I know, they're all working in the box. Uh, the best composers I know, um, you know, th things like composers, they're not out there recording um, strings in a in a in a big hall with a a, a quartet and stuff like that. They're not. Then that's not what they're doing. They're using sample libraries, achieving this great sound that pretty much sounds just like the live thing and it honestly does you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily listen to something in the concept of a whole song and go oh yeah that's not live and it sounds 90 99% there and it honestly does and these are the biggest biggest like film composers like the, the, like the biggest films and they're, you know, they're using sample libraries and that's not uncommon and everybody's doing that. So you don't even need to have preamps to go out and record. You don't need to have all this. You don't, like, if you do want to get something, if you're going to record your own stuff, have a nice preamp, have a nice interface, have nice speakers. If you really want the perfect setup, and this is my opinion on what the perfect setup would be for any composer, producer, songwriter, the perfect setup would be a nice interface um, that's what two in, two out. That's all you need. You don't need anything more. Uh, like a prism sound. Get yourself a nice, um, nice interface, um, a nice preamp. You can use the preamps on like a prism sound or something like that. But ideally, I'd say get yourself a nice preamp. If you want a nice, if you want to track nice preamp, maybe a 500 series, right? Get a 500 little 500 series cube, three slots, 
and pick your um, preamps however you want. A little tip in, in that regard, get them, if you buy second hand a preamp for instance, <coughs> now if you buy a preamp second hand, slot it in, you like it, you love it, keep it. Um, you buy another preamp, not so keen on that. You bought it second hand, you can sell it for pretty much the same price that what you what you pay for it. So it's kind of like a, a, a eBay or, or Reverb or one of these sorts of places. It comes, becomes like a rental thing where you go, oh, I like that, test it out. Yeah, I like that, I'll keep that. And with 500 series, the great thing about that is you can just slot different modules in, um, choose which ones you like, and that's all you really need right? in terms of outboard hardware. Um, a great mic, you know, like a, you know, it's, it's, I say like Neumann U87, it's, it's a good mic. It's going to get you a, a decent sound. I, I mean, I've got over there a Rode NT1000. I love using that because it's got a really kind of flat frequency response. Get yourself a nice, nice, nice mic, nice preamps, nice interface. That's if you want to track. If you don't even want to track, don't even bother with a mic, don't even bother with preamps, just have a nice interface. Now, the reason I say a nice interface is because you need good ADDA converters, right? So you need the good converters, convert the audio, go out to your speakers. Decent pair of speakers, not not like speakers. You can you can spend you, know, you spend five hundred pound on a pair of speakers. They're gonna sound like a five hundred pair of speakers. Five hundred pounds pair pair of speakers. You spend ten grand on a pair of speakers. They're gonna sound like ten grand speakers. You know, so that that that's kind of thing where it's like, what's your budget? Right, get whatever you can afford into your budget. Then as a luxury have a SSL UF8, eight channel door controller. Brilliant, all your door control. UC1 if you wanna use the SSL um, channel strips and really get hands on with those channel strips. I'd recommend both of them. I, I really like the two of them together. Um, next, a real good computer, like a Mac M1 Studio. That's what I use and it's brilliant. Great computer, a nice big wide screen, not a little screen, Big, nice, wide screen. Get, get yourself a nice, wide screen. Fit everything on. Um, and that's really, I mean, that is it. And you're talking max, you'd probably spend on all of that. You're probably talking about 15 grand. You know, which, which isn't a massive, massive amount. But you're talking 15 grand in the analog world. You're talking, you know, four grand, three grand, four grand. So you, you pretty much bought just that rack there is probably 15 grand so it, it adds up and you aren't getting that much better sound using using this than you would in uh, producing in the box and honestly stay in the box it really is much more um convenient to stay in the box i mean it's 2022 you know we don't need to come out to hardware when we're producing Believe me, <coughs> we don't need to come out to hardware when producing. Come out at mastering stage, and it's a massive benefit. But in the production stage, it's not, it's not worthwhile. 